How's it going everyone? Thank you so much for joining in today. This is William Soil with Magnus Miniatures. Today I am going to be talking about how do you paint your Luminate Realm Lords the Light of Eltarion within one hour. That's right guys, one hour. I'm going to talk about some little details on how I paint it. I'm going to talk about a little bit of certain steps. And one of the big things that I actually want to use today is that we're actually going to skip the whole thing with edge highlighting. I know a lot of people hated edge highlighting. It can actually make it or break it a good model or not. But on this case, we are going to be doing a simple steps just to avoid it. So whether you're good painters or not, whether you're just starting up when you're pro players or pro painters, join me. If you haven't liked and subscribed to my video, do it right now. And so enjoy guys. So I know time is a complete crunch here, so I already primed the model uh, by brown. Uh, I actually use Krylon, one of my favorite primer. I know a lot of people would probably bash me for it, but please be afraid. Uh, models are okay. I love using them. Um, so originally, I airbrushed them with golden uh, color. It's a high flow acrylic meant for use to be for airbrush. And I used the color titanium white. So I want to make sure that all the whites are highlighted properly. Uh, I want to make sure that I put in a lot of the white on the uh, armor parts on the lights or where the uh, the actual uh, lights are actually reflecting on the armor. So I want to make sure that I, I airbrush it from the top. I don't really take cover uh, the inside parts of the armor. And um, to do that, you want to make sure you angle it properly as well too. And so moving on, I actually switched to uh, Testor's Opaque Blue. Um, I actually really like this color, especially for airbrush, um, especially when you're trying to get that deeper bluish color look. Also, that, that's why I picked the blue combination with the pink and all that kind of part. So as you can see, um, I airbrushed just a little bit portion of the head. You want to make sure that you left the white portion in the head itself so that you know when you airbrush them the color still pops the reason why the white really helps is because it makes the color a bit brighter and so after i airbrushed with the opaque blue uh, from the test store i actually switched to the vallejo uh, deep sky blue And so moving on, um, we are actually going to use my favorite color of all. It's the Createx Fluorescent Pink Color. Literally, I use this for every of my model. Believe it or not, all my Slanesh, all my Deepkin, all my other armies use this pink. It just gives so much flavor to the army. And it's really bright, but then not really too powerful. The, the color's kind of fluorescent and also transparent. So the reason why I actually left the white on the side is so that the pink actually shows up and actually give you this popping up flower sort of diamondish color on the light of Altarian model himself. So after doing all the airbrush, um, like I said, the process needs to be within an hour. So by this point, I already spent about, you know, 10, 15 minutes airbrushing all the cards I look. So I have about 30 minutes actually doing all this. So to get put into the rush, I use one of my favorite gold color, which is the scale 75. That's it, guys. You should get it. Scale 75 is probably one of the best um, acrylic colors, hands-on, in my opinion. <laughs> But you know, what do I know? I just started painting anyway. So on this one, I used Moonstone Alchemy. And um, I choose this color because it does have this 
silverish, goldenish, and yellow color looking on the head. And I want to have this effect. I want to have a gold that does not look too strong, does not look too yellow, but metallic enough just to show you that shining bright armor filled with a diamondish look and all of its paste. So I just detailed um, all of the armor, all of the helmet, all of the sword parts, and uh, yeah, um, I really like the way it looks, and um, they they really look like a queen or like a prince himself. And so if you guys are wondering, I got the sweat palette from Army Painter. I I won LVO last year, and so this is one of the prizes they gave it to me. Believe it or not, this is actually the first one of the first model I actually use it for. I haven't been using Wet Palette as much, but believe it or not, guys, Wet Palette is the savior. When you use Wet Palette, it saves you so much time. You don't have to thin your paints as much. You just have a good consistency all the time. So I really recommend it. Whatever Wet Palette you're using, just use it because all it is is it's just a wet tissue paper in the bottom and some parchment paper on top. And so at this point, I think I already spent about 20-25 minutes around the process. So I kind of want to speed things up a little bit. Um, gold is probably one of the most detailed color in this model. I actually have to do a lot of uh, back and forth golden color in there. But um, I know that after I detail the gold color, we're basically about 70-60% done of the model. Because golden blue and pink is where you actually get the contrast of the paint itself. That's where I actually get, you know, um, those really good looking tabletop um, kind of color on the field. And so after I finish up with the gold, I want to give another dark contrast behind the cloak. And so in this case, um, I actually mix a mixture of Vallejo black color and some navy blue color. I want to, I don't, I don't want to have those um, just blackish um, rope color kind of thing. And so I measure and I mix uh, both of the two color to make sure that uh, the proportion of blue and black kind of blends in with the uh, pink, with the blue, and as well as the golden color of the armor itself. And as always, like just Duncan said, make sure you thin your paint everyone because um, with bigger surfaces like this, you want to make sure that you do two thin coats. I know I can't probably say it as much as would be good, but... <laughs> With, with a big coat and surface area like this, you want to actually make it a couple coats just so that you have a really smooth surface. And when you actually prime them, you don't see any um, kind of brush strokes or any monopolies or deformities that are actually going to make the cloak look a little bit worse. So be patient with this. Just do maybe two or three strikes of the black color and blue with black color. And you can actually get a perfect smooth uh, fine coating in your rope. So before we go into the special technique that I was mentioning about, um, I want to make sure that all the models are done. And so before we actually go to the armor, I want to do the actual uh, bases first. So if you know, my secret techniques in all rock is essentially the 3GW color combination that I love the most. So this is my big secret, guys. It's Celestial Gray, and then a layer of the Screaming Skull, and then highlighted, or what you call it, airbrush with the edge yellow from GW. So it's really simple and easy. At the first phase, you want to make sure that you cover all of the dusty, all of the bases with the Celestial Gray. What it gives is, is a really natural, dusty, concrete looking um, that's basically all kinds of pillars, all kinds of bricks has. Um, the layer of Screaming Skull actually brighten up, makes the color a little bit more pale. And so the reason why I actually want to look at more pale is because I typically wash them multiple times. Either I wash them with greens, agar earth shade, a known oil, or a bunch of other shades. So by actually make them a little bit more pale, you can actually wash it down and actually bring it up again with the edge highlight or the edge yellow paint that we have. As I mentioned earlier, this is the agar earth shade. Make sure you don't just dab the entire thing on the model because you don't want their coffee stain on the model. You know, you paint it so good of a model and then next thing you know, you have so many, you know, those water ponding effects in your model. So don't do that. Um, sometimes you can actually just put water on the pot itself. Make sure you control the amount of washers they actually put in. I know some people put it in their wet palette. I'm too lazy. I only have an hour anyway. And at this point, I'm already about 30, 40 minutes around the face. And, you know, 
um, I gotta make sure this is done pretty fast. And so I actually did some cheating process in this one. I know I gotta be done by one hour. So to make sure that the Agrax Earthshade is actually dried out by by the time I use it, I actually went to the hair dryer, kind of dry it up a little bit. All right, so literally this is the highlight of the day, the Tamiya panel accent color. So the Gundam users typically use it to accent line or kind of line their panels with the Tamiya paint. So the main difference between using this or an Agrax or Shade wash is that the Tamiya accent animal paint is a different kind of a material. So basically it acts as a wash, but since you're using a different kind of paint, sort of a thinner or kind of material, you can actually watch, watch this effect. And, and so in a nutshell, even if you make mistakes, even though if you put it too much, you can always clear it up. And so as you can see here, this is so easy. Um, all I gotta do is just dab on some colors on the armor. And then at the end of this, all I'm gonna do is erase the remaining brown color with the enamel lacquer um, thinner. And so what it does is essentially create a pseudo um, edge highlighting effect because basically when you're washing your model, you kind of destroy the light effect or you kind of make the model too dark. But if you can actually bring it to the original color you have before, now you're basically age highlighting the model by just simply washing the model, right? That's literally deja vu, right? That's the best thing ever. So this is what I'm doing here. I essentially just dab my cotton bud to an enamel thinner and I basically clean out all the excess paint sets around the model. And so um, it basically cleans up all the unwanted wash mark effect that you usually can't even clean when you're using an, a GW contrast or GW wash kind of paint. So this is really the best part of using Tamiya panel accent color. It's the fact that you can actually clean it and you can actually make a really clean look afterwards. So after actually cleaning up or washing the model with a Tamiya panel accent, I actually want the model to be a little bit brighter. And so before I did that, I want to make sure that the model is actually flat. And so I actually um, clear coat it with a really flat color. I actually really love flat color models. And again, I use my favorite spray can of the world, which is the Krylon model. Please don't bash me on this, guys. I really like Krylon. They're really cheap. Literally, I got them for six bucks. I use them really oftenly and uh, they have give you really best quality, or I mean, enough quality for my model, essentially. I do a lot of commissions and then I typically... So in the final step, I actually dry brush the model again. I actually clean some of the model's colors because some of them haven't dried enough and uh, it was pretty unfortunate. So I gotta make sure I dry brush it again. Usually I don't really do this, but I just wanna make sure that they look really nice I want to make sure that, you know, even though I took an hour to paint this model, this model needs to be good. It's the damn light of Altarian himself. So this is the final tip and trick of the day. Literally, this is my deep shirt, guys. Please, please, please do this. So if you don't like edge highlighting, but you want that effect really good enough, what I suggest to you is use a white color. Just do it as a dip. So follow my, follow my action here. What I'm actually doing is basically just dotting white colors on the edge of the model either at the edge of the helmet at the edge of the armor at the edge of the sword what i'm actually doing is essentially providing this kind of fake light effect on the armor it surprisingly looks stupid but on the tabletop they look super amazing because you can basically trick your eye by having this white color on each of the edges of the armor each of the edges of the cloth you're basically just doing a really high edge highlighting color, bringing up the color up a notch just because you have this white dot. So there it is, guys. Thank you so much for being and joining in my video. I really enjoy your company. I hope you enjoy my video. Please like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, enjoy the light of Volturn himself.